Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's show. And we have live with us today, Sue Hitzman. She's the creator of Melt Method. And I'm Dr. Maggie Yu, and I'm an integrative physician. We have our program, Transform Autoimmune Disease Naturally, to help people turn around their autoimmune disease. Today on, on the shows, we want to feature experts who are movers and shakers, who are helping people transform their lives and their health. And today, I am thrilled to have with us um, Sue. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, introduce Sue really quickly. Give me a second. Let's have, um, let's unmute the Sue. Can we do that? Great. So Sue, um, I was I was made aware of Sue. It's, I've heard about Melt Method for a long time, but it wasn't until Amanda went through our program to transform her autoimmune disease that Amanda introduced me to you. So I want to say thank you, Amanda. And she's here joining us today too. And Sue, so I'm going to have you tell us about Melt Method. And I wanted to preempt this by letting everyone know how much Melt has actually changed my pain. Um, I just learned about this literally two months ago, and I've been using Melt Method, specifically the next sequence, and it's been a game changer for me. So without further ado, Sue, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and Melt Method. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Maggie. So I'm Sue Hitzman. I'm the creator of Melt. And MELT is a simple self-treatment technique that people can use at home on their own to restore uh, the supportive qualities of something called fascia, which is the supportive infrastructure under our skin. And I kind of developed it out of my private practice. I was trying to empower my clients to get out of my office and get back into active living. And a client said to me one day, if you could just invent a way for me to do to myself what you do with your magic hands, I'd stay out of your office. And so... It sounded like a great idea. And so I started to incorporate softballs and I came up with this idea of using PVC piping wrapped in bubble wrap, wrapped in a yoga blanket and then a yoga mat and I duct taped it together and I started to do these compression techniques that simulated the light touch therapeutic techniques I did with my hands and it worked. And actually one of the first uh, sequences that I developed was the neck release sequence. And this was a woman who had chronic migraines and TMJ. Uh, she was just always exhausted every day. And it was just like how you said, it was a game changer for her. And uh, I just started to share it with my clients. And by 2004, I had just helped thousands and thousands of people with these chronic issues. I coined the term melt. And uh, today I've got over 2,000 instructors worldwide, and uh, the Melt Method book is translated into 10 languages, and I just uh, finished my second book called Melt Performance, which is due out April 30th, which is um, kind of going a step further with Melt and teaching people not only about how to restore the supportive qualities of fascia, but how to actually improve sensory motor control and neurological stability, which is one of the key components of actual joint alignment and joint stability. So I'm just excited to be here and excited to share some of the techniques and some of the ideas with your listeners. You know, um, if you guys are watching this from my page or if you're, if you are watching this somewhere, come to my, um, there's a page, a uh, link that we're, um, for slash live that we're posting right now that if you go to that page and click that link, you'll be able to actually click, uh, click a link to learn more about Sue and the different ways with which, um, you can actually experience her, her products and her program for pain relief. Um, what I'd love for you, and what I'd love for you guys to do too is if you don't know me and this is the first time you've seen me, you can always go to drmaggie.com as well to learn more about me and our program to transform autoimmune disease. Now, about specifically about pain relief, um, Sue, we're dealing with a population with autoimmune disease where we literally have hundreds, if not thousands of points of pain, um, that are basically targets of autoimmune attack in our body. There's so much inflammation and there's so much autoimmunity involved that there is not even a rhyme or reason as to why someone's in pain in the population yeah. we're dealing with. It's not always just, oh, a frozen shoulder. Sometimes people just hurt because their fascia hurts, their muscles hurt, they have fibro. Um, so diffuse pain and generalized pain is, is a problem in our population. And there's very little hope because it seems like people think they don't realize that they can turn autoimmune disease around. I mm -hmm. love what you're doing because it's something they can do. Can you tell us exactly what they can do? Yeah, well, first of all, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of autoimmune disorder you have, inflammation 
is the problem, right? It's, and the problem with inflammation is that there's, you know, like if you had scleroderma or you had MS or mitosis or rheumatoid arthritis, any of these kind of issues, the issue is actually in your connective tissue. And one of the things that we need to understand about pain is that although 100% of the time your brain is what's producing your sense of the pain that you feel, uh, when pain is chronic, you have an issue in your connective tissue because in the connective tissue, you have billions of sensory receptors. And these receptors are what aid your nervous system and your brain into understanding what's going on both internally and externally. And the problem with autoimmune issues is that our body is actually attacking us. And it's not doing it on purpose. It's just part of these types of disorders. And one of the biggest things that autoimmune issue does is it alters the collagen matrix, which again is the fascia. And it can cause things like fibrosis. It can cause a stiffening of connective tissue. So, you know, for a lot of people who have autoimmune issues, when they're sitting for long periods of time, they get up and their joints feel very stiff and tight. They wake up in the morning, they're very tight. It turns out that daily living is causing the exact same effect, even if you don't have an autoimmune issue. Even people without autoimmune issues have these same issues. So the thing about the inflammatory response that's occurring is it's altering really key cells in our fascia, both the fibroblasts, these cells that produce the collagen matrix, and these newer cells that have been discovered in the past couple of years called fascicytes, which are the ones that produce hyaluronin. And hyaluronin is so important because that's what creates the gliding and sliding in fascia. And what MELT is here to do is to help ease the compression in and stimulate these cells to try to get them back into their activation and try to restore some of the sliding and gliding in the connective tissue and also to reduce the stress accumulation that occurs in the nervous system in general because when the nervous system is affected through inflammation there are these key cells called glial cells and glial cells are like 90 percent of your brain cells are glial but a ton of glia live in fascia. And so if the glia and fascia are having issues, the brain will also become affected because they're all inherently linked as well. And so what I found with my clients who have these mixed connective tissue disorders or inflammatory disorders, autoimmune issues, that the, the secret of using MELT is this gentle approach of just easing compression in, trying to quiet the stress reflex to try to reset the nervous system's communication between the fascia and the nervous system in general. And, and it's powerful. So we, for people who have autoimmune issues, um, in the MELT Method book, I kind of map out what to start with. And the best places to start with autoimmune issues, in fact, are your hands and feet. Because in our hands and feet, there's billions of sensory nerve receptors here. And so it gives the nervous system time to actually reacquire global communication just by treating your hands and feet. And then there's another sequence that you learn. And this is the, you know, if anybody's ever used a, a, a foam roller, our roller is soft. It actually has a lot of, of pliability. And it, it allows the tissue a little bit more time to adapt, which is really important if you have an autoimmune issue. You don't want to cause pressure. You don't want to cause pain to get out of pain because that can actually induce more inflammatory effect in the cells. And so uh, one of the key sequences in the MELT method is called the rebalance sequence. And it's a very subtle way to stimulate the diaphragm and to alter uh, neurofascial communication, body to brain communication by accessing the deep neurological core system, which is really what stabilizes us and allows us to function efficiently. Um, and also with you know autoimmune issues, your gut is usually wreaking havoc as well. And so when you do something like the rebalance sequence, it's actually stimulating your organs in a very gentle way, which can then alter something called your enteric nervous system, which is the gut regulator. And that can also in turn turn into a, um, a, a what we call a, a parasympathetic response. It can quiet the stress reflex that boosts the body's digestive behavior. And again, if you use the compression techniques properly, it helps to just restore the fluid flow of fascia. Um, and that in turn helps a very important component of our immune system called the lymphatic system. So fascia and the lymph are utterly inseparable. And there are these uh, new research has really shown these, these pre-lymphatic channels, which recently in, in the news, they were called the interstitium. And they're essentially the conduit between fascia and lymph. 
And so if fascia is always in a state of inflammation, it congests those pre-lymphatic channels, and that then causes this catalyst to the uh, immune system and to our lymphatic system. And this can deregulate our lymphatic system, which is one of the key factors of the explosion of inflammation in our body. I mean, thanks for that overall explanation. And there's uh, actually, because um, it, it all ties together, Sue. Yeah. And I, there's already some comments. Candace Richardson says, hello, always eager to learn ways to help with my graves. Yes. The, and people don't realize how graves is not only do you have one diagnosis of graves, but man, there's a thyroid receptor on every cell of your body. And there's many other targets of autoimmune attack. So just because someone has graves don't mean they have full body pain or some joint pain, right? Exactly. And then we have Nicole Cart who says, I have so many unanswered questions. Hey, Nicole, why don't you click the link, hop on in, and you can ask Sue and I questions live and uh, shortly in, you know, in the next 20 minutes or so. Um, so but Sue, that's what one of the things was, uh, we, have our, we have our live event for our alumni uh, recently, and a huge part of our program is about putting all these pieces together. You know, you got to use the data, you got to use the science, you got to you gotta deal with your gut, your vitamin issues, your hormone issues, right? But the piece that people don't re realize is, and no one comes in asking me for this, but they need a movement portion uh, to really turn around their autoimmune disease. Yes. I mean, that's actually a big component because, again, the thing about the autoimmune problems is that science, like nobody's really figured out what the autoantigens are because, like, if it, is it the tissue, is it the cells, is it the proteins, the enzymes, the organs, there's hormones, you know, the glands, you've got, it's like, it's, you don't know what the body is actually attacking. And that's the problem, right? Is that they can't find a pill that's going to fix the, the um, immune problem. So, movement is so important and I know when you have an autoimmune issue you are exhausted and the last thing you want is somebody telling you to get up and go do something but it could be as little as just standing and bringing your arms up overhead and inhaling and exhaling just trying to connect with your body and move is essential and in in melt what we do we, we have a protocol we call the four R's of melt reconnect rebalance rehydrate and release. And really the foundation of the melt method are the reconnect techniques because the one thing I know about people who are in chronic pain is they just want to tune it out. They, they want to get out of their bodies. They don't want to go in and sense what they feel because all they feel is pain. And what melt does is it gives the brain a redirect. It gets the person, the, the, your, your conscious part of the mind, to redirect your attention away from the pain and into the aspects of the body that accumulate with stuck stress is what I call it, or connective tissue dehydration, this fascial issue. And it gets, it gets the, the brain to hone into another aspect of the body. And in doing that, it actually can help to trip the switch of the mind's ability to sort of sense what they're feeling and to get their brain to quiet that stress response so that the pain response is a little bit less. It's a real important component of it. Well, and it's not even just pain. I have Molly Khan here. She's a graduate um, of our program with POTS and that she turned around. And she even mentioned, if you think about the uh, CSF in, in the neck and head area, the, the flow of fluid around the synovial fluid, um, there's a huge role for melt and movement to actually deal with symptoms of POTS. Yes, absolutely. I actually deal with a lot of people who have POTS and, you know, the, that issue of like getting up and down and, and feeling dizzy and all of these other issues that they have not necessarily pain. The good news about melt is that a lot of the sequences you can actually do in your bed. You don't in, need to get the on the neck. floor. You can even do the rebalance on the wall. You could put the roller up against the wall and do the rebalance sequence there. Um, that's the beauty of melt is that it meets people where they're at, that they're, that these little five to 10 minute treatments that you learn. We have this um, new streaming platform called Melt on Demand and the getting started section actually maps this out so that people who are coming in with real problems, not just, oh, my back hurts because I played a tennis game yesterday, but like my back is hurting. I, I'm feeling not myself. I, I feel exhausted all the time. I'm fatigued. These, the getting started section really maps out how to use melt in the, in the best way so that you get the biggest results in the least amount of time. And then all of the beginner sequences range from anywhere from three minutes to 13 minutes at most. Because if you have an autoimmune issue, 
what you'll learn is less is more, get in and get out. You don't want to stay too long in your body because your body doesn't, you're, and what I mean by that is the parts of your body that support, protect, and stabilize you and melt, we call those areas our autopilot. And you want to kind of tap into your autopilot, introduce yourself, and then leave. And each time you come back, it helps the autopilot reset and regain its ability to actually change the body. Because I really have a belief that within all of us, there is a capacity to heal. And our emotional state of our disorders are a huge factor in how we perceive pain and, and how we deal with it, how we manage it. We can actually our own emotional uh connection and tie to pain can actually increase our pain reception. So oftentimes when you have an autoimmune issue, the very first thing you want to do is change your relationship with your pain issues. And that's the beauty of melt is it really goes into this more. I really think it's a much deeper level of who we are and that how our cells are reacting to us. And, and it's an important component of restoring health is changing your mind to change your body. So, you know, for me, so a, here's a good question, um, is that when people first get started, I remember just stepping on a, on a, on a ball with mm -hmm. my feet, and that's one of your beginning sequences, and yeah. to me, it was a great way to get started because many people with autoimmunity have struggled with foot pain, and a lot of what we use our feet for is to ground us to the earth. Yes. And we have to stand on it. And so, but the sensation of having this ball as part of a beginner sequence was actually a big change and shift, even emotionally. Can you explain that? Yeah. So, I mean, you have it right. Like our hands and feet are the gateway to the world, really. And the sensory receptors that are in there are actually inherently linked to our digestive and gut system. And stepping on your feet can enhance something called ground reaction force, which is how your brain figures out where your joints are in relationship to the ground and your pelvis when you move. And when you have an autoimmune issue, the fluid flow of connective tissue gets so impeded that where it tends to really get stiff the fastest is in the extremities. Mm -hmm. And this is bad news for us because in the extremities are these sensory nerves that are absolutely critical to the body brain communication. So think about it. If you tried to get around and you bound your hands and your feet down, how hard would it be for you to sense and feel the world around you? And when you have an autoimmune issue, you're just not realizing how much you're missing in helping your brain figure out where you are when you're moving around. And so that's one of the things that disconnects us. So the foot treatment is so critical for people with autoimmune issues because it neurologically helps your brain figure out kind of like GPS, like a global positioning system. It helps to enhance the body brain communication to all of the joints just by treating your hands and feet. And this is the ball that Dr. Maggie's talking about. This is the large softball. And you can see how soft and squishy this is. And Sue, yes. I, I, this sound, I don't want to sound weird, but your balls are very different. <laughs> yes, they are. I think everybody should rub and squeeze my balls. Come on, do it. It's good for you. <laughs> you know, number two, like, you know, these balls are made of non, there's no latex in them. There's no phthalates. And that's another thing. If you have autoimmune issues, a lot of people have the skin problems too. And this is important that you're not just rubbing your feet and your hands with any ball unless you know that there's no toxic chemicals in it because it can actually cause a flare-up. So when I was designing the balls, like this is pretty much the size of my elbow, the little balls that we have, these are the size of my fingers. And so you learn how to use these. And some of the simple techniques like gliding, you compress the ball and you just bring it back and forth between your hands. A shear effect, trying to literally pin the tissue and create a shear between the layers. And then rinsing the tissue, moving the fluid and getting that action going back into the tissue. What we don't realize is just like blood flow, fascia has a, a vortex, a fluid chain of motion because of our lymphatic system. The pre-lymphatic channels are literally sucking the fluids out of the fascia and, and, and transporting it to the lymph. And again, if fascia becomes too viscous, it becomes too stiff, it, it, the, the, it, it's like a backup. It's like having hair in your drain, right? And yeah. so this is what it is, is, is really, again, these gentle, soft compressions and treating your hands and feet is the most important component of everything. 
It's great. I, I love that description. And for me, like just stepping on the ball, um, I was because um, we do movement in our um, there's movement in part of our um, program with our live events. And one of the things I noticed was we did the ball sequence. And then we also did yoga with opening the warrior pose. Mm. You know, it, it was like it literally like when my feet were grounded and my heart was open yeah. and welcoming, it was like I felt the energy shift in my body. Yes. Well, that's it is we, you know, I don't think people realize like how much energy force do we get from the earth itself? Right. There's, you know, we, we, we know about this grounding and going out into grass and walking in bare feet. A lot of us, I mean, literally when I talk to people, I live in New York city, I have clients who have autoimmune issues. And the first thing I ask is how often are you in bare feet and out on the grass? And they're like, what grass? I said, there's a central park right down the street, go out there and stand in the grass. And it, I don't think we realize how important the earth is energy is to our overall well-being but it it is an energy field and our energy literally gets stuck in us and when you start to stimulate your feet it really helps the nervous system recept where we are i, I mean and, and i mean that on every level not just you know structural but chemical emotional physiological when we think about stability you know, we always think about like how upright we are, but stability, when I talk about stability and melt, we're talking about that on all levels, the chemical, the hormonal, the structural, the, the, the psychological, the emotional, every aspect of your body is relying on fascia to function in an efficient way. And when fascia, the supportive architecture under your skin is not doing its job to support, protect and stabilize you, everything suffers your nervous system suffers your digestive system suffers your endocrine system suffers fascia is one big endocrine gland so if you want to help your glandular system you have a glandular disorder fascia is a living breathing system of reception and if it's again not in a quality state Think about that. You know, I mean, it's just like your environment. If you live in an unhealthy relationship and an unhealthy re environment, how well do you thrive, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the thing about when we have these types of disorders is that the medical practice oftentimes is treating your symptoms. And the problem with that is it's like finding a leak in your faucet under your kitchen sink and deciding that you're going to put a bucket under the, under the, uh, the, the pipe to manage the leak. And I guess it's kind of fixing the symptom, but if you don't actually go in and fix the pipe, at some point that pipe is going to burst and now all of a sudden your house is flooded and now you have a bigger problem. And that's the thing that happens with connective tissue is oftentimes before people actually have the symptoms of the connective tissue disorders, they've actually had pre-pain signals and a lot of messages from the body for years. And it's just accumulative stress. I mean, I know genetics plays a factor. We know that it does, okay? It definitely plays a factor. But we even miss those genetic potential to shift our DNA. And, and fascia is related to our DNA. And, and our DNA can change. And it's important for people to realize that I mean, I've seen people transform from having Hashimoto's, having yeah. chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia. I've seen people reverse MS. I mean, it's a, an incredible thing what the body can do. It, and again, it's, it's everywhere. Your nervous system and your connective tissue are relying on your self-care. You know, Sue, I just think we have a lot of comments here, but I'm going to go back to this point. Um, the, I think people, the, the field you work in and the field I work in, I, you know, you're working in physical movement to deal with pain and disease. I'm dealing with all the other alternative tools and medicine to all of those tools combined to actually turn around disease. But the part, the problem with the population we're dealing with is that their doctors and a lot of them believe that the only way to deal with this problem is meds. Yes. And I think pain medication and even medication to deal with pain like Neurotin or Cymbalta, I mean, these are all things that aren't really dealing with actually what the functional cause of this problem is in the first place, which then presents a problem in itself. Yes, I agree. I'm just, I, I hear my sirens going off here. Sorry, we're, we're in New York. Um, I think that's the big, that is the bigger issue for many people is that when you, you know, unless you find a, a doctor like you, Maggie, really, people start taking one medication and that medication might 
might do something to particular cell receptors, but it's going to do a whole host of other things that, you know, you watch those commercials and it seems to me like, you know, oh, take this medication. You might have, you know, anal bleeding and, you know, your organs might in get inflamed. You might go blind, lose your hearing. Um, you won't or, be able you to might die. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Death. But, but listen, um, maybe your skin will clear up. And I'm like, uh, is it, it's the only industry on the planet that can that can stand there and tell you all of the negative stuff about it and tell and then and then in the commercial you're seeing people like surfing and having a great time and having a picnic and they're they're dancing and I'm like what kind of bullshit is that that is not what happens when you take those drugs those well, people are having a party on those drugs well we have Amanda here she's a pharmacist actually and and she's a client that's been through our program and you know and there's a lot of people that we're seeing with autoimmune skin conditions like psoriasis yes that are being offered Humira <gasps> It drives me wild. I mean, I literally get crazy over it because the side effects of that one are, are the host, the list. There's like 50 different things that could happen to you taking something like that. And really, for a skin disorder, I mean, your skin is a huge organ. I mean, they don't even care about nutrition. I mean, honestly, most doctors will not even say, how about just um, let's take away dairy, soy, and gluten. And maybe some sugar. Why don't you start there and just give that three weeks and see if maybe if we really hone in on your nutrition, if we can actually aid in that. What else is going on? But right. that's the thing. Again, most doctors are, they're practicing cure. They don't practice prevention. They don't practice. They're not proactive. They're reactive in their care. And if you have an autoimmune issue, you're being reactive to everything. And I know people get so desperate that they'll do anything if a doctor tells them to, but doctors don't know about alternative medicine. In fact, many of them have been told to not have any comment over them, to just leave it alone. Just keep it over there. It has nothing to do with medicine. And it's wrong. I mean, there's such a nice compliment. We're not talking about even alternative care. It should be all called complementary care. Oh. A little bit of both sides is important because sometimes you need a drug and it's important that you take it. But there's also an opportunity to try alternatives which are complementary in, in, as, as an alternative. But it's a complementary thing. It's not like we're saying don't take your drugs. Go ahead and take your drugs. But I love that, Sue. Here's the thing is I'm not anti-drug, but that's just one of the tool. But why aren't people doing what we're doing in our program, which is really testing their food, looking at their data, testing their hormones, educating them about their vitamins and minerals and about movement, about all these pieces before we say, oh, the first step is Humira. We're not doing that. I feel like the medical profession has failed people with autoimmune disease. And the answer to me is a comprehensive approach with all the complementary approaches to be added as other tools to this. That is the solution. That is how we've seen results here. I agree. I agree. I think that it's a big, it's a big component. And I know the problem with, with the diet and starting with the diet is that it always feels like what you're doing is you're taking things away from someone. And, and that on a psychological level, so me, it's like, but I, but I like my potato chips, but I like my sausage, but I have to, you know, I'm, I have to eat a piece of, of sugar in a day. You know, I have to have sugar in my coffee. And that's a, it's called a, a thought virus. And we create, <laughs> we create these thought viruses that it, it, it has to happen. And this is all there is. And the doctor said that all I have to do is take this medication and I can eat McDonald's every day and I'll still be okay. That's just not so. It, you, you know, it's our duty to take care of ourselves and we are not taught self-care we need to practice it's a discipline and, and and it needs to be a daily self-care practice just like brushing your teeth you're you're doing brushing your teeth today so that people can stand your breath and you can talk to people without them stepping away from you but you're also doing it to prevent tooth decay tomorrow and that's the important part of self-care is is that it's for today and tomorrow i love that and um I have comments where um, Megan um, Burnett says, I'm newly diagnosed with lupus and on Simvelta, and I don't feel like it helps. A lot of people don't feel like it helps. Okay. Um, there's uh, someone else that says, uh, Don Russello says, my um, feet, legs, neck, chest, randomly swell and become incredibly painful. I'm having lots of pressure in my chest. And then I'm also having a major histamine response. These are typical cases we hear with autoimmune. Yes. We got Rebecca Palacio saying that I'm living with sarcoid and I will share this. It's sarcoid awareness month. You're wonderful, Sue. 
<laughs> oh, I love that. And then um, we also, there's a lot of people talk, asking questions. I'm really do, um, um, with about themselves. Um, Christina Chun's in our audience right now. Uh, I'm popping ibuprofen like can I was popping ibuprofen like candy. It ended up wrecking health in my digestive system. Hell yes. Yeah, that's that. That's a big thing that people need to realize is most of the drugs that they're giving you, some Balta and all the other ones, the flora in your gut changes when you're on those medications. And that's why all of those symptoms are so radical for so many people that again, it's actually altering for some people, it will wreck the lining of the intestines, but it will also alter the flora and the neurotransmitters. We don't realize, I don't think a lot of people do, that there's more neurotransmitters produced in the gut than there are in the brain. And the ones that we produce in the gut are the ones that the brain relies on so that it functions efficiently. So if you're eating a poor diet and you're not really strict with it, I, I know it's hard to give up your foods, but I'm telling you, what, what do you want? Are you really wanting the hamburger or are you wanting to live a better life? You've got to pick one. You can't have McDonald's and live a good life. You've got to pick one. You know what I love, Sue, about what we do, though, is, is that I love using the data to actually bring clarity on food. Yeah. And we are the opposite of an elimination diet. And so many people in our audience is just eliminate, eliminate, eliminate. And when you Google what is the elimination diet for lupus or sarcoid, you're going to get 20,000 results. All of them telling you eliminate 30% of the food on the planet and they right. all contradict each other. Right. So for me, data is really important here. And that's something really different that we do is I lo love to use the data to show people what's going on with hormones, with their food, to say specifically, based on data, this is exactly what you should do. There is a marriage of the melding of data and complementary techniques to bring clarity and certainty for people. Well, and, and what you're doing is what most people will never go the limit to do, right? Is that they're just going to be their own WebMD, right? They're going to Google something and they're going to do these crazy diets. And here's the thing is that the difference between what you do, Dr. Maggie, and the word diet is that you're talking about finding the right nutrition for this person. It's not about the diet. It's about the nutrition. And if you're not taking the time to understand that your microbiomes and your body is specific to you. And, and unless you have a doctor who unfortunately is not a traditional doctor, is going to do a blood test and really try to figure out where your hormone levels are and where your endocrine levels are and to figure out if there are things that you're eating that are counterbalancing your own body's ability to fight and, and to not be in a stress response all the time, but to actually allow your body to kick back in and repair. And the problem with the stress response for people with autoimmune is it's just on, 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 on. It, it never rests. Even when they sleep, they don't get a restful night's sleep. And, and the thing is not REM, it's deep sleep. That's where cellular repair is dominant, is in deep sleep. And if you're not getting into that one phase where you get in and out of it, that's where, that's where you're wreaking havoc. And again, it's, 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 it's an unfortunate thing that our healthcare has become a sick care industry that is all bureaucratic and it's all on money because going to somebody like you is going to cost me something out of pocket more than if I go to a regular doctor, maybe. But I think that's probably true. Yes? Mm -hmm. That's what people are saying. <laughs> so what I'd love to do is, guys, this is time for you guys to be able to come on and ask Sue or us any questions face-to-face. -face. If you head on over to uh, right now. So we're back. And those of you who have joined us, uh, if you have a question for us, go ahead and click that link right now, uh, uh, drmaggie.com forward slash live, and you can click and join the, our conversation. Those of you who are in our green room right now, thank you for being here. If you have a question, I'd love for you to go ahead and type the question into um, into um, into chat right now. Um, Lu Lucia has a question. Lucia, do, go, let's go ahead and unmute you, and you can ask your question to Sue live. There you are. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, hi. Um, hi. Um, nice to meet you. I know Dr. Um, 
You, but I didn't. Uh, I see it for the first time. I have a question. Did you ever hear about Bowen work, Bowen technique? It deals with fascia and a lot of what you were talking about. It came from Australia. I was just curious to see if you ever heard or used it. Yes, yes, of course. Bowen therapy is fantastic. In yeah. fact, many of our instructors are Bowen therapists. And that's, that's the beauty. Like if you have access to someone who does Bowen, I think Bowen is probably one of the practices that has a lot of similar thread in the, in, in what the intent is to do. The difference between yeah. doing melt and doing Bowen or any other therapy is you have to Find a therapist, you have right. to spend a lot of money, and you have to have time to continuously go to someone like that. But if you have access to somebody who does Bowen, if you added melt in between their sessions, okay. the, thing, the thing your Bowen uh, practitioner is going to tell you is, is how much better your tissue is for them to work with, and they'll be right. able to push you faster into a healing state and they won't keep working on the same things over and over. It's a beautiful compliment. It's wonderful if you have a bone therapist. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I do. Um, okay, where can I get more information about the MERT methods? You can, you can go to meltmethod.com and you uh -huh. can, you can find all of the products and all okay. of the tools. Um, you can also type into YouTube, type in okay. melt method and you'll see some videos there as well. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Lucia, also, you can go to our drmaggie.com forward slash live, and there's actually a direct link to the information that Sue's talking about as well. This is for anyone that's watching. Um, and then April, you have a question next. Yes. Hi, <laughs> how are you? Miss you. Um, I was wondering if this, you could successfully do the melt method um, just by reading the book and reading through information, or is it better to take classes or it's one or the other, or you need both? That's a, that's a great question. So in the book, I really go into the science behind the methodology and what really is the method. So if you really want to create a self-care practice, I feel like the book is going to enrich your understanding of, you know, science and and the actual techniques going to melt on demand at the streaming platform what's nice is that after you read the information in the book you can go to melt on demand and you can actually watch the videos for me i would think that you know if you go to meltmethod.com and you click on find melt you're going to find our instructors and if you are in an area where instructors are located, I have to tell you, the beauty of having a, an instructor is that you're also in a group environment and oftentimes that energy shift in the actual room with all of the people can actually help to induce and lower that stress response because everyone's neurological fields are changing, all of the physical fields are changing. And the other beauty is that, you know, having an instructor help to guide you for your specific needs, it takes the guesswork out of which sequences you want to do or when you go to the to the app and you kind of look at the maps, if it's melt for neck pain or back pain, you're like, well, I don't know. I mean, I have an autoimmune issue, so what's my thing? Uh, you'll learn more about that in the book. But again, you go to a, a, an instructor and they'll really guide you. I mean, I think Amanda would probably want to chime in and make a comment over that, yeah? Go ahead, Amanda. Yes, also it, it's it's a good idea to take a class or two so that the instructor can also spot you and see if you're like, you know, um, have the roller in the right position, especially on the SI, you know, the, um, the SI joint shear, like where you have the roller underneath your sacrum. So you, you want, you know, you want somebody to spot you and, and, and um, correct you if you're, if, you know, if you're doing something incorrect. Yeah. So. It's a real insurance policy having, right. having an instructor safe. help you. Exactly. Yeah, no doubt. I, I saw, so I saw in the story of Long Island City, I'm not far from there. So I saw they have a lot of classes there. Oh, yeah. Um, and then do you recommend Melt Method over Melt Performance or is that just like a newer book or? Yes, it's, well, well, the Melt Performance book is due out April 30th. And this one, this, this book I'm super psyched about because in the Melt Performance book, I not only go into some of the techniques that were in the Melt Method, but now I add some of the neurological stabilization techniques. But what, what 
isn't in melt performance that's in the melt method book is a really important sequence called the rebalance sequence and if you have an autoimmune issue one of the things you want to do before you try to neurologically reintegrate timing and stability of joints is to learn how to quiet the stress reflex and boost your own body's natural repair processes and that one sequence is to me the sequence to learn. If I had an autoimmune issue using the roller, the rebalance sequence would be my eight minute every day sequence that I would perform. It's a, it's a very important one. And the real roots of the methodology are in that first book. So if you read that book in April and then in April 30th, pre-order your melt performance book and then read that, it'll just reinforce everything. Um, but I would, I would really encourage anybody with an autoimmune issue to first just work on trying to stimulate fascia and trying to get the supportive qualities back and then go to the performance techniques and try to reestablish joint stability and core control. That's really what you want to do is reactivate that deep stabilizing mechanism. So I think what's going on is there's so many different ways with which people can start their approach with melt. Like it's hard for people to figure out what's the best way for me to start. Um, and you mentioned that going to your book um, first, and then you mentioned YouTube videos. And I can tell you that that's my first introduction to you was getting the book. And then I watch your YouTube video on the neck release sequence. Yeah. And this is two months ago and I've been doing it daily. And I, Sue's not, what Sue's not telling you is she is a gifted teacher. I can't, I mean, I'm going to tell you, I've been doing a lot of tissue work on myself, but like I was doing your next sequence and there was once the part where you talk about you lift your head as if you're about to kiss someone. Yes. And I felt my neck adjust and release in a way I have never experienced in any physical technique I've used. Can you, I mean, you're an amazing teacher. I that appreciate was an insight. That. Can you tell yeah, you know, me? But I, you know, I, yeah, I mean, I started teaching in group exercise when I was 16 years old, and I'm almost 50 now. So, you know, I've been doing it for more than half of my life. And the thing about MELT is that, you know, it's based in very complex cellular and neurological science. But the thing is, if I started talking about fibroblasts and glycoaminoglycans to people, nobody's, I'm talking Chinese, you know, like nobody's understanding anything I'm saying in a, in a room here. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking another language. And the nice thing about MELT is that I've, my, I feel my gift has been to simplify this science into layman's terms with memorable metaphors and ideas that get the person to be able to do one thing, go home and do it on your own. It's the most important thing about self-care is that you are not held victim to your therapist, to you know your class, that you have to always go back to them. And that's the beauty of our teachers is that they actually speak in a different way. They're not looking to hold you hostage and get you to keep always, always coming back. They're there as your guide to help to continue to facilitate your forward motion. But you'll hear them say constantly in their classes, so when you go home and you do this on your own, just remember what I'm talking about here and try to commit this idea to memory because this will help you when you go home. And it's the language that we use, which is what gets people empowered to, to self-care because self-care is your own best health care, you know? So this is, I think, a really important piece about being good teachers. Like for me, this is what I love to do with our program is we, I love to say we teach people how to uh, fish. We don't throw fish at them, right? And <laughs> I do because <laughs> that's what we're teaching in autoimmune disease is totally missing. But when I look at what you're doing with pain, you're doing the same thing. I, 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 as I was doing your next sequence, I, rem I hear your voice in my head saying, check the range of motion. Right. Left <laughs> to the right. Well, and that's, that's the other thing that's important is that when you're doing melt, I think this is also something that separates us from a lot of methodologies, is that the most important actually component of melt is assessments and reassessments. And the thing is, it doesn't matter how good you get at doing the compression techniques. The whole important thing is to get out of your conscious mind's way and to allow your autopilot a minute to reset. And so if you assess yourself and you spend the minute doing the reconnect and scanning your body for where that accumulated stress is, it allows the nervous system to start to create new body-wide signaling because you're actually inviting your autopilot to do a scan. And then you treat, and then you go back and you lie back down and you see if you've eliminated some of those common imbalances that many of us possess that are left unaddressed from day to day. 
And those, the common imbalances that I refer to are the ones that end up destabilizing our neck and low back and, and cause autopilot inefficiency. So it's important that we pick those up and start to learn how to identify those before they cause us pain, because that's how you become proactive rather than reactive. We in this society wait until we've got a problem to get rid of it. And the thing is, the medical field actually, I think, wants us to be like that. They, they want us to get sick so that we have to come to them to get better. And I'm saying, I actually think we have a lot of ability for us to heal ourselves. We just need to open the door and realize how to unlock that, that potential of our autopilot and get it to reset, get it to fly the plane a little better. I heart you, sister. Preach it. <laughs> Thank you. I am um, Peggy. Um, Elin has a, um, she has a statement. Uh, and it just wraps everything we're talking about up together. We ha we what can we do with POTS syndrome and dysautonomia? We ha uh, how can we start to heal our autonomic nervous system? I've already started cleaning up the diet. Doctors want to put all the beta blockers. I am not going to do that. So for me, like the the problem is, is that like there's so many mechanisms for why POTS happens. But even just one of the targets, people aren't aware of. But a really one of the most common autoimmune um, attack targets is uh, it's a enzyme called GAD. Um, and yeah, is actually, uh, there's a lot of it in the cerebellum of the brain, which is important for balance. Yeah. And so it's really common. Those of you autoimmune, how many of you get car sick, seasick? How many of you with positional changes can get dizzy or nauseated is because we actually have that as an autoimmune target, but there's an underlying cause of it, which is that there's actually a, a balance component to this. That's causing a lot of these symptoms with the dizziness, with the nausea, with being car sick. But for me, like being by putting just a beta blocker, yes, what does a beta blocker do is it decreases the tachycardia in the heart. But does it change anything else that's going on with your autonomic system, with balance, with what's going on with your brain, with movement, with your proprioception, with your feet? Does any of that change because you take a beta blocker? I say, I know it doesn't. And in fact, I think it handicaps you because your heart's responding normally as it should to a stimulus and you're muting that. So you're actually disconnecting signals a cause and effect. That's really valuable information. What do you think, Sue? That, that's exactly right. I always say the way that the, the doctors want us to treat our our a body is like our fire alarm's going off because the toaster's on fire and they want us to walk over to the fire alarm and take the batteries out, but the toaster's still on fire. You know, it's like, what are you doing? You're taking out the body's natural response and that's actually going to increase the stress response. And you're right, like the cerebellum region, this is important that people realize that you can actually help to restore some of the fluid state. We have a technique I call the 50 second facelift where you use this ball uh, right behind the ear where your vagal tone, where your vagus nerve is, uh, and at the jaw where trigeminal nerve is and up at the temple and doing these small compression techniques in those areas from day to day can actually help to just bring some fluid flow back to re to help the nervous system reorganize around the face. And then one of the sequences you were talking about, the base of skull shear, um, for somebody who has tachycardia or any type of issues with their or POTS or anything where you, you're getting these issues where you, know, you stand up and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I'm so dizzy. When you do the base of skull shear, you would do it on your bed and you're going to create these very subtle emotions to try to shear the tissue. And think of shearing like if you grab your forearm, that shearing, this is not shearing. This is called gliding. If I'm moving my hand up and down my skin, I'm moving on my skin. If you grab your, if you grab your skin and you twist your, your arm, you'll feel how under your skin is actually rubbing against the tissue underneath. Or if you wiggle your fingers, you can feel how the muscles are contracting under your hand. That's a shear force. You have to pin the skin and create a shear effect at the interfaces. And that's, it's important at the base of the skull. And there's another, again, rebalance would be very important for somebody who has those types of issues. Um, and then even a little bit of uh, inner thigh gliding and shearing. I know that seems very far away from your head, but your inner thigh is part of the rooting mechanisms. It's what helps the brain actually re-centralize when you stand up and so the inner thigh gliding and shearing is also an essential component for people who have POTS. You, you can help that. And I think, you know, I mean, you have it spot on or, or, you know, again, you got an enzyme issue here, go ahead and take something that's going to alter the way your heart's working. It's like, wait, what? I mean, it doesn't even make any sense, but. Well, I, you know what, Sue, I call this hospice care. We treat autoimmune disease symptoms as hospice care. Yes. And, you know, I've dealt with end of life issues with my mom and with a lot of patients 
And what is hospice care is we basically assume that when you have an autoimmune disease, it's an inevitable march. They assume that it's an inevitable march towards pain, suffering, and death. And they're here to make you more comfortable. It just makes me nauseous, actually. I get so upset. I, I get angry. Like, I, my, my face is turning red listening to what you're saying. It truly is. I mean, honestly, I, I just can tell you, I have seen so many people suffering with pain. And I, I think that we have a choice to suffer or not. And the medical practice oftentimes is, is actually encouraging our suffering. It's not trying to resolve it. And again, it's, it, it really is the difference between taking the batteries out of your fire alarm when it's on, when it's beeping for you to take, you know, that's what pain is. It's your brain's way of asking you to take action and pay attention. And if you're taking a pill so that you can't feel the alarm, your house is going to burn down at some point. And the, the, you know, again, the pharmaceutical industry is just waiting for it to happen because they've got more pills to offer you for those kind of other issues that you'll have. And it's a vicious cycle. I think that we could do better. And I, I, I mean, honestly, like I wish I could get in front of every teenager and share with them information. It's just that we don't want to listen when we're teenagers because we're impervious to problems. But if we learned younger how we could prevent problems later, that's where proactivity begins is when well, we're young. Sue, what I love is I actually tell people, everybody who's doing my program right now, you all know this. Many of you in the audience as graduates, many of the people commenting are graduates of our program. For me, I say, if you're actually taking a proactive role in turning around your autoimmune disease, whether that be doing all the pillars of our program or whether that be adding movement to it as well, you're affecting three generations minimum. Because you know what? Girlfriend, the generation above you is an autoimmune mess. You're an autoimmune mess. And your children, what I have seen clinically is, is that if you have a daughter, the likelihood they have auto, they're going to have autoimmunity in their lifetime, what I see is 80 to 90% minimum. Uh, if you're looking at a, a, a child who's a boy, it's about 50 to 60%. And I mean, I don't even have an autoimmune issue, and I want to do your program just for the heck of it because I think I'm going to feel amazing doing it. Can I come over to your house? It's amazing. And, the, and, the, and these are, there are a lot of people asking questions like, how does hormones affect pain? How does oh. blood sugar? Another question was, how does blood sugar or does diabetes affect pain? And I'm like, it's all related. In fact, go to drmaggie.com forward slash live. You can actually go see my training. I have a free training on how these pieces fit together. Yes. And then on the same page, you're going to get to see a link to all of um, Sue's products. Go do that um, as soon as the show ends. Or if you're watching from that page right now, just click the link on your right and you'll see it. Uh, these are all related. And for me, it's like, <laughs> it's a huge honor to be able to actually put all this together for people. And you're a gift to teacher. So you're, you're, you're awesome. I mean, like the fact that you're teaching people this, that's the big secret, right? Is that you can't have a problem in your hormones and not have a neurotransmitter problem and a digestive problem. It's all connected. It, the whole, our bodies are one integrated system. Let's treat it like an integrated system and stop treating the parts. Put the pieces together and you suddenly can make a recipe for success of actually transforming your life. I love that. And anybody who's in our uh, alumni um, that's watching right now, write down what your results have been and what you've discovered about hormones and, and your autoimmune disease, blood sugar and your autoimmune disease. How did food mapping work out with your autoimmune disease? How did all this turn around to help deal with your pain? Um, so for me, this is, <laughs> this is a joy putting it all together and having you as a guest here. Um, thank you, Sue. I have a couple of questions. There's a couple more questions. Malin says, can you actually unmute Malin or, or is that too hard to? I'd love for you to ask you this question. It's, she has a, if she can't unmute, I'm going to go ahead and ask it. Connective tissue and dehydration. Yes, that's a great question. So, so first of all, dehydration, like if you have fascia that has the restrictions in it, it you know, you think, oh, she's saying hydration, like I'll just drink more water. But the thing is, if you think of connective tissue like a sponge, you're, you're kind of living with like a dried out sponge and just like a dried out sponge doesn't absorb water as well as a moist one. You, you got to get, it's like, think about it. I wish I had my sponge near me. You know, like I always have one oddly enough here, but think of, you know, when, when your sponge is dry, how do you get the water into the cells? You work the fluid into the sponge and then what do you do with it? You squeeze and you wait for a second. So when you let it go, you get the fill effect. That's what melt is all about. And so here's one secret about water. And I, and I hope everybody hears me on this one. This is about a liter of water, okay? 
your, your best bet if what you want to do is help the cellular hydration components of your body is to sip water frequently because the problem that most of us are doing is that we're taking all the pills in the morning and that's when you drink water and then you'll just drink a cup of coffee and then you don't drink much at all for a couple hours and then maybe when you're having lunch, you might drink some more water. But the thing is, if you get into the habit of just sipping, like I, I sip through a straw, just take a sip and then 15 minutes later, take another sip. If every 15 minutes you took a little sip of water, you would actually stay more cellularly hydrated than if you drank a liter of water and then you didn't drink for three hours. Your, better, your best bet is sipping it frequently and, drink, and eat water-filled foods like vegetables. That's the funny. ones that your body can tolerate, by the way. Like if you're, if you have autoimmune, like obviously there's all the autoimmune things like, you know, you eat like the, whatever, there's all sorts of things off the list, but eat vegetables. Right. Millie just started our program. So welcome newbie. This is, I think week two for you. Now you're, mute, you're off mute. So I'll let you ask your question to Sue. Yeah. I have another question. Could the MELT program help? Um, I definitely have connected tissue that is actually distorting my muscles at this point. And I'm wondering... And a lot of this damage, I think, was done from childbirth. So is the MELT method something that can help that? I have severe pain in my lower back and um, my tail end. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. And, and you're right. You know, I mean, bodies can actually have trauma from birth on out. And again, it's accumulative, right? And so, you, you know, you might have had symptoms here and there, and then it gets worse and worse as you get older. And, you know, here's the thing. Aging is not a disease, right? We, there's never going to be a cure for it. We're all going to get older. So really, if you have those types of issues and you feel like your muscles are actually altering, that's the, that's the thing about fascia is that when fascia stays in a, in a dehydrated or stiffened state and it loses its glidability, that's one of the primary catalysts for muscle imbalances and one thing in particular called uh, sensory motor weakness. You actually get a lack of muscular contraction and then what you end up getting are cramping because your brain's like, whoa, like, where are we are going to move? And, and, and there's the restriction that occurs. And then that just happens all the time in different regions of the body. So that is exactly the same thing. You would want to start to stimulate the connective tissue. And once you start doing the basic protocols, then you'd be somebody I would put to male performance and try to get the sensory motor control back on track. Um, and, and again, if you had real bad issues, I would, I would maybe go talk to one of our instructors on the website too. Yeah. I definitely can't even walk without the cramping getting so intense. So. Yeah, you're you're a prime candidate for it. You like that's exactly right. And and one of the moves I would tell you right away that if you if you learn about melt is the there's a sequence called lower body compression sequence and the calf gliding and shearing. Your calf is actually like it's like a distant friend that lives in California and you live in New York. It's like the best friend of your hip stabilization components. So working on the calves is, is absolutely important and can actually help to restore uh, pelvic stability and get the hip stabilizers to activate. So when you stand up, you feel less of that cramping and stiffness. This is just amazing because that calf, those both of them are just rock hard. They just can't yeah. move. Yeah, yeah. And the foot treatment also, like the mini foot treatment would be like a bomb for you. It'd be like the best thing that you could do every day. You, you, and honestly, the crazy thing is about the nervous system is like, you know, your muscles are like the dumb part of your body. They're like the dumb jocks in your body, the fascia and the nervous system, the intelligent components. If you start tapping into the intelligent systems, the dumb ones just come along for the ride. So yeah, it's really easy to manipulate muscles if you know how and do it through your fascia. So the foot treatment and the lower body compression sequence, I would be putting to you for sure. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you. Absolutely. You know, um, Sue, the, um, we're, we're going to wrap it up soon, but the, we, it is blowing up. The page is blowing up with people uh, just relieved. We're talking about POTS, dizziness, uh, palpitations. Um, people don't even realize how much of an autoimmune component there is to POTS <laughs> and how many solutions there are to POTS besides the beta blockers and all the medications that don't even work. Um, so for those of you that are watching that have POTS, why don't you write down in the comment section, you have POTS too? Say, me too, I have POTS. Um, what I'm going to do is we're going to post a link to actually join our Facebook group. Uh, we have tons of videos in our Facebook group of alumni, many of them some with POTS who've gone through our program and what transformations they were able to have just within the um, two months through our program. So this, it's blowing up because people don't talk about POTS and people don't realize that POTS is autoimmune and that there's actually a physical movement solution to this as well, Sue. 
Yeah, and, and you know, for anybody who has pots, one of the things I would also consider is we have another product. It's a half roller. It's flat on one side and curved on the other. And if you have a lot of trouble getting up and down or you feel like you're going to be working on your bed, you might think about doing the half roller because you can do all of the key sequences that you really should hone in on, like the lower body length and the base of skull shear and the neck decompress. You do all of those with the half roller and it, it'll be easier for you to transition into doing the other techniques you can do the rebalance sequence on it so getting like the half roller and the performance roller so that as you start to feel better you could upgrade and then do some of the compression techniques but with pots you know again it's just about being very organized and, and very steady with the treatments and again the hands and feet the rebalance those are big ones for pots that really starts to alter how people are managing their balance and stability and that's a huge factor to get into right away i also want to point out that um i think it's important actually to buy your rollers and your balls because i have experienced it myself where i buy a cheap roller and those press and they over time they distort and then i bought a roller that's crazy hard that's actually painful for me and the actual plush lit and resilience of your rollers and your balls, big difference, Sue. Yeah, and also this, our roller is also, it's, it's smaller in circumference. I don't know if you can see, like it's not as big. Most of them are about six and a half inches. This is a little less than five. And when you have to put a roller under your pelvis, you know, if it's too high, it causes too much tension on the low back. And so it kind of, it lowers the changes. You don't get quite as much transformation. And our rollers aren't made of that hard material. They're soft and they have a rubber-based material to them. And again, there's no latex, there's no phthalates in it. And it, it'll actually start to transmit heat as you're on it. And especially when you're doing the compression techniques. And that is what makes the treatments last a, a longer. So it's, it's, um, I, you know, I'm not trying to push my own. You can do whatever you want. You want to buy everybody else's rollers, have at it. But again, like it's make sure that there's, if you're looking at somebody else's products, no latex, no thalliates, make sure what you're buying. And there's a lot of other things out there. Just be mindful and no hard rollers. If you have an autoimmune issue, here's the thing. Don't smash your fascia and cause pain to get out of pain. It doesn't even make any sense. You're already in pain. Don't do things that hurt you more. It doesn't make any sense. I love it. Thank you, Sue. So this wraps up today's program, and I want to thank Sue for being so generous with her time, with her interview, and answering all your questions so everybody in our audience can get to fangirl you today, Sue. Yay. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I so appreciate it, and I'll definitely check out the post, and if I can answer any questions, I, I'll be happy to answer them tomorrow also. Great. So for those of you, go to our, um, if you want to learn more about Sue and Melt Method and about our program, go ahead to drmaggie.com forward slash live and you can watch our training and you can get also to um, check out um, Sue's site. Um, my plan and what I'm seeing all over chat is everybody says they found a local melt instructor. Some people have said. Uh, those people who said, I just, um, I just found melt on demand. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> And so it's not just the book. There's Melt on Demand. There's local Melt instructors. It's blowing up the chat where and people in here are talking about how they've already found a local instructor right down the street from them. Uh, Midge just said, I ordered the book. Thank you, Midge. <laughs> I'm so happy. Really, I need to. Thank you. Yes, so thank much. you so much. They go find an instructor. Don't sit there in pain. Don't suffer. Go, go find help. There's, there's people there that can help you. Thanks, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed the show today. Thank you.